I want some lunar tablets for female complaints. Where do I get those? Hello, I'm Madeline, or just Maddie, and today we are doing a book haul. We hauled some books. It's so cold in my apartment. I don't turn on my heat until my plants are sad about the temperature. Then I will, then I will give in, but it's not because I'm cheap, it's because I'm stubborn. So, nice and cozy. I thought it would be a fun day to try out floor time again and just go through some books that I purchased at a bag sale. I'm very self-conscious about how I say the word bag, bag. I can really get into the Midwestern bag. As a proud library goblin, you're not gonna find me doing too many book hauls. I don't do a lot of book purchasing. I have some, these are real but this is a special occasion. So for context, there's an organization in my area that has a used bookstore where you can donate your books and they sell them for a couple bucks a piece, but they use the funds from selling those donated books to fund adult literacy programs. So tutoring and other resources to help people who have low literacy as adults kind of get their skills up. And a lot of the times the people benefiting from those services speak English as like a second or third language. So it's super important. You need to be able to read. So like advocate for yourself and have better job prospects and all that. Anyway, this bag sale. So every year the literacy organization rents out a big space, they fill the whole thing up with tables, they haul in a bunch of books, they fill up all those tables with books, and then for 20 bucks you get a bag and you can go through and just fill it up with as many books as you want. 20 bucks. I also learned this year you can bring bags from home. So next year I might just show up with an industrial sized garbage bag and just sort of dare them to stop me from filling it up with books at a charity fundraiser. But yeah, super fun, awesome event. So I volunteered to help with setup this year for a couple of reasons. Number one, good cause. Number two, I have paid volunteer time through work that I really don't use often enough and I should. I highly encourage everyone, milk your employer for all they're worth. Use all of your PTO, use all of your volunteered pay time, demand a new keyboard. Number three reason for volunteering, I was really hoping that the older, like, retired ladies who typically volunteer with the organization would compliment my strong muscles as I effortlessly lug huge boxes of books off of the moving truck and into the space. I have been craving geriatric affirmation ever since I went to aqua aerobics with my grandma when I was like nine and all of her friends were super impressed with how high I could kick my leg in the pool. Number four, most importantly, volunteers get to fill up their bags for the bag sale before it is open to the public. Heck yes. I'm in. So I spent two hours hauling boxes, setting out books. Somebody donated several huge boxes of books exclusively about ships. Clearly someone's great uncle Magellan passed away and his family just donated his entire library of nautical nonfiction to this used bookstore. Very bizarre. When my shift was over and it was time to like grab my bag and books, it became sort of like a supermarket sweep situation because I was very hungry and really needed to get back to work. I'd had a couple books that kind of caught my eye as we were setting things out, so I sort of discreetly tucked them away under a table. No one had complimented my strong muscles all day, so I was not going to risk letting them get their grubby little paws on the books that I was interested in. Charity fundraiser or no? That said, I didn't really take my time with these selections at all, other than those couple that I had sort of set aside, so I'm very excited to justify my split-second decisions to you all today. If you can vouch for any of these actually being good books, please let me know in the comments, because who knows? Starting off, we've got a few books that have been made into shows, including Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I didn't know that Big Little Lies was a book before it was a show until I was already done with the first season of the show. So that's fun. I did really enjoy the show. I don't like this cover at all. We're just going to take that off. Oh, much better. I'll throw that away. Um, I typically like to read the book before I watch the show, but in this case, I remember the big things that happened, the bigger of the big little lies, but I'm sure there's some nuances and some things that didn't make it into the show or there were some changes, especially because I'm pretty sure the show was only supposed to be one season and then they stretched it into two. And then I read somewhere recently that they would be open to doing a third season. So I'm like, we're just really going off book. We're going off-roading here, folks. Super talented actresses in that series if you haven't seen it yet. I don't know why I keep acting like I'm going to throw this book at my camera. Also, I didn't look up, I just realized, the pronunciation of a ton of the authors of these books, so I'm so sorry if I get them wrong. <laughs> uh. But yeah, Big Little Lies. I'm pretty excited to read this one. This might be at the top of my list once I get into all of these. 
I also think this is the biggest book <laughs> that I got at the bag sale. It's, you got to decide whether you're going for quality, quantity, some combination thereof, because some books take up more space than others. Next year I'm going to have this down pat. I will go in with a strategy with my industrial sized garbage bag. Next, a smaller book, Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Is it Gillian or Gillian? Oh, I knew I was going to do this. I'm going to look it up. Hold on. It's Gillian. I'm so sorry, Ms. Flynn. Uh, next up, Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. I just heard it and I'm still not confident. Gillian. Ugh. I have not seen the show, but I do love Amy Adams and I'm interested in seeing the show. So I do want to read this first. It shouldn't take too long. It seems like a fairly quick read, but I've also heard it's really sad or kind of depressing. But either way, maybe that's a good fall vibe is just some sad, depressing books and shows. I read Gone Girl this year <laughs> for the first time. I'm behind on everything uh, and I really liked it. So I'm confident that this one will also be good. And it didn't take up a ton of space in my bag. I also grabbed national bestseller Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. I know it's her name, but I don't, it doesn't feel good to say. Again, TV adaptation with another redhead, Rose Leslie, who is also amazing and has been in many things. I am convinced there are only like 50 British actors and everyone just gets to cycle through Harry Potter, Downton Abbey, Game of Thrones, Doctor Who, various British procedurals. But Rose Leslie is awesome. And uh, I would like to watch the show. I haven't heard a ton about it since it kind of came out, but either way, I'm interested. This is also one of the heavier paperbacks that I have ever held. It's got some decent like flop to it, but it's just heavy. Dang. There's nothing I love more than a woman being defined by her relationship to a man. Along a similar but not the same note, we've got The Tiger's Wife by Taya Obrit. Taya Obrit. I have no idea what this is about. Maybe it's about two tigers in a committed matrimonial relationship. Maybe it's about a woman who married a tiger. I guess we'll see. I'm a sucker for historical fiction and this Robin Maxwell book, Signora da Vinci, caught my eye. It translates from Italian to Lady of Vinci, and it appears at first glance to be about Leonardo da Vinci's mom. So that will be interesting to dive into. Let's look at her. What a stunner. When we're not defining women by their relationships to men or big cats, we can define them by their place of origin. So I picked up Shanghai Girls and Dreams of Joy, both by Lisa C. And if I'm being really honest, I picked them up because it's a nice set and they are hard covers and they're in good condition and I like the cover art. So that's kind of what caught my attention there. They seem to be historical fiction. I've also been reading a little more Asian historical fiction lately. I read Pachinko this year. I'm in the middle of Norwegian Wood, which isn't that historical, I guess, as far as historical fiction, but still kind of on a kick there. So I thought these might be cool and they're pretty. Okay, before I get into this next one, the book Molokai is one of my favorite historical fiction books of all time. Maybe one of my favorite just books of all time. It tells the story of Rachel, who was a little girl in like the early 1900s, I believe. Um, she's a native Hawaiian and she is diagnosed with leprosy, what we now know as Hansen's disease, but it was still called leprosy back then. And um, when you live in Hawaii during that time period and are diagnosed with leprosy, you are sent to Kalaupapa, which is on the island of Molokai and it's like the leper colony. So it kind of tells her life story starting from her diagnosis and onward. It's one of those books that I emotionally connected with and I also felt like it made me smarter or sort of better informed, which is a great combination to have. The story and the setting and the characters and the like even socio-political kind of climate of that era, it was so fascinating to me. I also love the book because it includes a person that I had already heard of in real life. So Father Damien, who is now Saint Damien, was a Catholic priest who was sent to Hawaii, the leper colony there, to kind of minister to the people who had been exiled. And when he got there, there was like nothing there. And so he, along with a lot of the native Hawaiians, of course, uh, helped create more of a community. So it wasn't just like people are coming there to die, but people can still have a life. He was all about continuing to like treat people with dignity while they were living there. And so he eventually got leprosy himself because he would sit and like share meals with them and work directly with them and obviously help with like changing bandages and things like that and just not, you know, shying away from their illness and disfigurement and that kind of thing. So he eventually did get it himself and pass away. 
and he's not in the book a ton but it was just kind of cool to see because i was like hey i know that guy so i love molokai now imagine my utter astonishment when i'm unloading books and discover there's a freaking sequel there's a sequel to that book that i have read like three times and love so much i had no idea just chilling on a table at the bag sale there's a sticker i need to figure out how to get all the way off but a second book i was so excited best day ever i will definitely be reading this also those books are by alan brenner i forgot to mention that it gets better it gets better wait so i meander over to the nonfiction section like the intellectual i am what do i find the colony the harrowing true story of the exiles of molokai by john Taman. it's an actual like research nonfiction book about kalo papa so I get to know even more about this thing that I'm already interested in. And I am, I just thought that was so cool. And also, what are the odds? I'm very excited. I want to read these kind of like in tandem or one after the other. I just think it's going to be so fun. Hey, I'm editing and I just realized that I am out of focus for the whole next section of this video. Uh, if you want to look at something other than my blurry face, on the left side of the screen by the plants, you will find a 3D printed model of my teeth on that little table. My dentist used that model to make me a new retainer and then asked if I wanted it, and I said, of course I do. So that's there, and it's not blurry if you want to look at that instead. Thank you, and I'm sorry. Surprisingly, that's not the only book I picked up from the nonfiction section. I didn't head over into, like, the ship territory, but this one probably has submarines. It's Operation Mincemeat, How a Dead Man and a Bizarre Plan Fooled the Nazis and Assured an Allied Victory by Ben McIntyre. Okay, I vaguely remember listening to a podcast about this like years ago, and I'm not going to read any more of the description because I just want to see if I sort of recall what it's about. I think it's the Allies planted fake like intelligence or plans or something for World War II on a dead body that they then planted somewhere for the Germans to find. And they wanted it to look like he had been shot down, like in a plane and then shot down and then drowned or something, whereas like on a beach. And you have to make it really convincing, like the forensics have to match up. They can't be suspicious that they're being like tricked when they find this fake intelligence. And so they had to like make sure that the uniform was properly worn in so that it looked like an actual uniform that someone had been wearing. And I'm really interested to see, because this is a fairly hefty book, so I'm looking forward to getting all the ins and outs. I love espionage. The last thing I picked up from the nonfiction section was The Compact Timeline of the Bible by Samuel T. Jordan. I have not read the whole Bible because I don't have to because I'm Catholic. The Bible's long, so let's kind of speed run the Bible with the compact timeline of the Bible. I'm also interested in sort of putting the Bible into the larger timeline of history. I think that will be pretty cool. We'll see what happens with this one. In other biblical news, I grabbed The Red Tent by Anita Diamant. I've heard of this book many, many times over the years. I knew it was historical fiction, but I had no idea quite how historical it was. It's the women in the time of Jacob in like the book of Genesis, like way back there. I don't know anything about the story. I assume it has something to do with like periods and midwifery because of like the red tent part, but who knows? It's a widely loved book. I've seen it on lists and well reviewed for a very long time. So we'll definitely read this one. Here's where we start to get a little more into the I had no idea what I was doing. I was just picking up books type thing. These one next couple just looked like edgy. So grab some edgy books. Uh, this is My Notorious Life by Kate Manning. I believe it is a historical fiction situation again. It just kind of looked a little bit badass. Like I want to read about someone's notorious life. Uh, 1860s New York. Ooh, her name is Axie. That's cool. A few bottles of lunar tablets for female complaint <laughs> into a thriving midwifery business. Okay, so we're back on the midwifery train. I want some lunar tablets for female complaints. Where do I get those? Cool. Well, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading more about Axie and her notorious life. Is that based on a real person? You know what? I don't want to know. Let, let's have it be a surprise. Here's where my edgy teen at heart won out. This is Paint It Black by Janet Fitch, uh, author of White Oleander, which I have heard of but never read. Again, cool cover, seems kind of badass. Awesome song. Love that song. A dark, crooked beauty that fulfills all the promise of White Oleander. 
and confirms that Janet Fitch is an artist of the very highest order. Meow, meow, meow. Yeah, so another one that seems pretty promising. I'm not gonna read any more of the description. I want it to be a surprise. All right, pile's getting lower. Also, are you impressed with how many books I was able to fit in this bag? There are a few more that I picked up simply because I recognize the author's name. This is another one where I loved this author's other work and had no idea there was another book. Uh, I'll Take You There by Wally Lamb. Wally Lamb played a big part in me kind of making the transition to adult literary fiction when I was a young person. I read She's Come Undone way too young for some of that subject matter. I have I got the book at the used bookstore on a non-bag sale adventure just because I was like, oh, this kind of emotionally scarred me. But I was super obsessed with it. I've read it a couple of times. Another of his books that I really loved was The Hour I First Believed. The main character, Calum, his wife was a nurse at Columbine High School during the massacre. Again, fictionalized. So the rest of the book kind of follows how that event affects them as a couple coping mechanisms that then have kind of big impacts on the rest of their lives and at the same time our protagonist is kind of uncovering parts of his own family's history and his own history and it's just heartbreaking and interesting and heavy. All of Wally Lamb's books are just really heavy so even though this is shorter than his other pieces I expect that it will also be sort of like emotionally taxing. <laughs> Side note about Columbine that has nothing to do with anything. In college, a bunch of us who lived on the same floor were all talking about birthdays, and I mentioned that mine is 420, like April 20th is my birthday, and my friend Jeremiah, who is from Colorado, was like, oh, I always had your birthday off from school, and somebody made some joke about like, oh, you had 420 off from school in Colorado, like, haha, <laughs> and Jeremiah goes, no, I went to Columbine High School, and 420, or April 20th, is the anniversary of the Columbine Massacre, so we didn't have school to recognize that tragedy. Then there was a very awkward silence. Moving on. We've got The Almost Moon by Alice Siebold, who is the author of The Lovely Bones. That is basically the only reason I picked this up. Also, I like the color of the cover. I find I am drawn to blood orange. I have several books in that color family. Blood orange, she's so pretentious. Shut up, it's red. Blood orange. Okay. We Were the Mulvaney's by Joyce Carol Oates. Again, author's name sounded familiar. I may or may not have read some of her short stories or something. I'm not entirely sure. But then, of course, as soon as I got this book, she started acting up on Twitter and saying some stuff and whatever. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. This probably isn't at the top of my list as far as actually reading these books, but I have it now. I do own it. It's in Oprah's book club. <laughs> okay. When we were setting out books for the bag sale, one of the other volunteers mentioned that a lot of the time they get rid of a bunch of kind of bodice rippery romances during bag sales because people are too embarrassed to get them at the normal bookstore, like to roll up to the counter with just a bunch of like Fabio covers going on. And I thought that was kind of cute. Anyway, I grabbed The Aged Innocence. This cover sucks. <laughs> I get that it's like the movie cover or whatever, but like this is a Pulitzer Prize winning author and this is... Yeah, this is the most movie cover I've ever seen. It's got the credits for the movie in a little box here. Like, we get it. It was a movie. It's a classic. Figured mine as well. And again, didn't take up a ton of space in my bag. Always a plus. Lawn Boy by Jonathan Evison. I've read through a lot of banned book lists recently. So uh, when I saw Lawn Boy at the bag sale, I was like, you, naughty book, were on banned book lists, which means you're coming home with me. This is also an advanced reading copy and is not for sale. Even more of a rebellion buying a banned book that's not supposed to be for sale. Can't wait. We're down to our last two. Oh, it's been quite a journey, my friends. So, She Weeps Each Time You Are Born by Quan Berry. Again, don't know what this is about. I think I thought it was about the Vietnam War. Am I wrong? Luminous fiction debut. Tumultuous history of modern Vietnam as experienced by a young girl born under mysterious circumstances a few years before the country's reunification. A child gifted with the otherworldly ability to hear the voices of the dead? Okay. I'm intrigued. Yeah, we'll see. That's interesting. I'm interested in that. This has a hair on it. And we'll wrap up with another little one. This is A Long Long Way by Sebastian Berry. That last one was by Quan Berry. I wonder if they're related. Stupid. 
Uh, it was a finalist for the Man Booker Prize. I think it's another war-ish book. 1914, eight-year-old Willie Dunn leaves behind Dublin and everyone he loves. Yeah, war book. But Fairly Skinny didn't take up a whole lot of room in my bag and there's a nice little cherry on top of an exceptional bag sale experience. I don't even know if that was the last one I put in, but we'll pretend it was. Thank you for tuning in to my bag sale haul. Don't get too used to it. I don't have any more space for books in my home unless I get another bookshelf, which it kind of feels like I'm going to do. I'm very excited to get started with a few of these and a few others I fear will probably gather dust on the shelves or floor of my apartment and then maybe end up back at the bookstore from whence they came. Either way, again, thanks for hanging out. If you like the video, like the video. Uh, I would love comments if you have suggestions for which book I should start with or which should go away. And I hope you subscribe and I will see you in the next one if you are there. I'm left-handed and I always forget that this mug has a bad word on it if I hold it with my left hand. And I did drink out of it on a Zoom call with my old CEO once and he was like, nice mug. Like, Thank you.